In this video, I'm going to be explaining how chicken eggs are fertilized. And stay tuned because I'll be going into some interesting information about the development of the chick and brooding of the hen and also talking a little bit about the hatching and answering some questions. So let's go ahead and dive right in. We, now, we all know that you don't need a rooster to get an egg, right? Well, our hens will lay an egg daily with or without any assistance from the male sex. However, if you want fertilized chicken heads, you will need a rooster to perform his duties with your hens, which he will be happy to do continuously. A rooster is genetically programmed to take the task of populating the world with his offspring, and he is single-minded about it, dedicated even. So this video is going to talk all about the fertilization process, how it comes about, and how you can contribute to getting fertilized eggs. So let's first start off with mating season, which typically happens in the springtime, also known as spring fever. Courtship, mating, and raising brood starts in the springtime. The increase in daylight energizes the hormones, and the increase in hormones leads to procreational behaviors. The pineal gland in the chicken's brain detects increase in light. This in turn stimulates the manufacturing of androgen, estrogen, and progesterone, the hormones responsible for increasing egg production and broodiness. These hormones in turn produce a cascade of other hormones necessary for the development of the yolk and the soon-to-be embryo. You should remember that many of today's chickens' breeds have had the innate ability to become broody bred out of them. So few, if any, will sit on eggs for you. If you don't have a broody hen, you will certainly need an incubator. An interesting thing to note here is that broodiness is infectious. If you get one hen to go broody, you will likely have at least one more of the ladies who want to brood. Most of these secondary brooders will not sit for 21 days, so placing eggs under them is probably a waste of time, but occasionally one will see it through. Now let's get into chicken courtship. Some roosters are a little bit romantic, others not so much. And to indicate interest in a particular hen, the rooster will perform the courtship dance. It's a bit like a rooster tango. He will approach the hen from the side, dropping a wing near to the ground and do a little fancy footwork rounder. This is his come hither dance and he will repeat it until she either indicates she likes him or walks away from him. Hens are no easy mark though. They will have evaluated his merits as a suitor. Does he provide food? Is he a good protector? Is he healthy? And is he sexy? Of course. A red comb and waddles really get the ladies interested. If he passes the inspection, she will let him mate. If not, she will ignore him. He will start tidbitting in earnest once spring arrives. He will pick up interesting morsels for the hen to inspect, luring her over to check it out. If it turns out to be nothing of interest to the hen, she will brush him off. So he must be on top form in several arenas of showmanship and ability to win her approval. Occasionally, a hen will dislike the rooster and may never mate with him at all. This is rather unusual. Hens also have a neat little trick about rooster sperm. If they decide they don't want the sperm from the mating, they can eject most sperm to avoid fertilization. Now let's get into the fertilization of a chicken egg and the mating process. If you're witnessing a mating for the first time, you can be forgiven for thinking it's more akin to the word that rhymes with grape than love. But fortunately, the hens don't see it that way. The act of mating looks quite barbaric, but in fact, rarely results in serious injuries. Roosters are very zealous in their mating practices. He can mate anywhere from 10 to 30 times per day, depending on the level of cooperation from from the ladies. A rooster can adequately cover up to around 15 hens, but in reality, he will have favorites that he will tend to more frequently. The optimum time for mating is early mornings when his sperm load can be anywhere from 100 million to 5 billion sperm. So how does the rooster fertilize the egg? Once the hen has decided she will accept the rooster, she will squat down to the ground and spread her wings to steady herself. He will mount her from the back, grabbing her head feathers in his beak and treading her with his feet to find a stable spot in which he can balance. The next part is an interesting part because it has a weird name called the cloacal kiss. It's called the cloacal kiss because inside his cloaca is a small raised point called the papilla. The papilla is what passes the sperm. During the kiss, the hen must open up her cloaca so his sperm can reach the unborn, unlaid eggs in her oviduct. After he passes his sperm, they carry on their business as usual. The sperm that he passed will fertilize the eggs she had that day and some days after. He will use his claws to get a steady grip on her. This is where most injuries to hens occur. Her sides can be ripped by claws or long spurs, causing some skin to be torn up. You can help the hen to ensure the rooster's spurs are short, and if he's frequently mating with certain hens, fit them with a hen saddle for protection. All right, now let's get into chicken reproductive anatomy. But before we do, please be sure to like this video and subscribe
content to the YouTube channel. Also be sure to subscribe to our website, thehappychickencoop.com. If you subscribe using the link in the description, you'll receive a free ebook on the 10 best egg laying chicken breeds. All right, now let's first dive into the male anatomy. The rooster has two working testes, which are located in his abdomen, very near to the kidneys. He can constantly manufacture sperm as needed for mating, ever ready. The rooster does not, however, have a penis. He has something called a papilla inside his cloaca. The papilla is a tiny bump on the cloacal wall. The testes deliver the sperm to the papilla via the vas deferens, which in turn delivers it to the hen's cloaca. Now let's get into the female anatomy. A hen is born with two ovaries, but the right one usually atrophies and dies, so the left ovary is the one that will carry all the eggs a hen will ever lay and then some. The ovary contains hundreds of egg follicles, including the ripening egg. When it's ready to be dispatched, it is dropped into the infundibulum of the oviduct, where it begins its descent. For an in-depth look at chicken reproductive anatomy, we've put together an article. If you want to check that out, I'll link to that in the description. All right, so let's get into the journey. Sperm from the rooster is deposited into the hen's cloacal area and migrates up into the vagina where it can rest in pockets in the wall. Rooster sperm is viable for seven to 10 days inside the pockets, although fresh is best. However, sperm intent on fertilizing travel on up into the area of the oviduct known as the infundibulum to ensure sure success. The hen's oviduct is approximately 30 inches long and the intrepid sperm travels about 29 inches to reach the infundibulum and deliver the genetic code to the germinal disc of the egg. Once the rooster DNA is delivered to the hen DNA in the germinal disc, they fuse and become a zygote, which is also known as a fertilized seed. It takes about five hours for cell division to start and at this point it's called a blastoderm or embryo. Cell division and expansion continue unabated as the now fertile egg goes through all the stages necessary to make an egg. This includes laying down albumin, building the shell, and applying the bloom before the eggs lay. If our hen is interested in being a mother, she will now find herself a nesting place that is quiet and dark. She will start to cache her eggs until she has enough to start incubating them. The number in a cache is variable, but you should try to make sure she can cover all the eggs she has. Between five and eight is a reasonable number. If she has too many, remove some to another hen or just take it to the incubator. Now let's get into the development and brooding. If you allow the hens to hatch their own, you can do a few things to make the process smooth. Firstly, make sure the rooster can't hurt her during mating. Trim spurs and talons, use a hen saddle if necessary. Secondly, when she's looking for a dark and secure place to set, try to encourage her into a small separate area where she can be undisturbed by the other birds. Add in a feeder and waterer so she has her own little apartment and she should be all set to go. The area should, of course, be fully secured and be locked down for for safety overnight. Once our hen has decided she has enough eggs to sit on, she will start to brood. This means she will sit on those eggs for the next 21 days until they hatch or die. She will chase off the rooster if he tries to mate with her at this point. Once she becomes fully broody, the rooster will not fuss with her. He may be a Mr. Nice Guy and sit on her eggs for a while, but most roosters don't. His involvement with the chicks will not start until they are hatched. Our broody will diligently turn warm and fuss over her eggs for the next 21 days. During that time, she will rarely leave the nest. You may see her once a day run out the coop, perhaps to have a quick dust bath and then run back to the nest where she'll rearrange her eggs before sitting again. Total dedication. And now let's get into the last part, hatching. Once hatched, mama will take great care of her little chicks. No one will mess with a broody hen and chicks. She will then defend them very vigorously. They will learn all they need to know from her. And if Rooster is a family guy, he too will take turns looking out for his offspring. If you want to know how to raise chicks, we put together a complete guide, mind you, on raising chicks, which I'll link to the description as well or after the hatching period. So how do farmers know if a chicken egg is fertilized? Well, the quick but most destructive way is to crack the egg open. A fertilized chicken egg has a white spot on the yolk. This spot is called a blastoderm. However, once you crack the egg open, it is open to bacteria and cannot grow into a chick, so it must be thrown out. Another way to tell if an egg is fertilized is to use candling. Once you have waited a few days for either the mother to incubate the eggs or you have an incubator, you can take the egg into a dark room. When you're in a room, put a flashlight underneath it. If the egg is fertilized, it should have a clear spot with veins within the egg. The frenetic mating activity of spring and early summer will start to moderate when the days get too hot and humid. By this time, the broody mamas will have signed off on their chicks and will soon recommence laying fertilized chicken eggs and the chicks will be finding their own place in the pecking order. Any young roosters hatch will generally defer to 
the head rooster, which helps keep order in the flock. A rooster is considered old at around three years. So if you have an older rooster in your flock, the new boys will be challenging the alpha male at some point. If you found this video helpful, please be sure to check out this one over here where I talk about chicken anatomy. Also, be sure to check out this one over here as well, where I'll be answering how to deal with a loud rooster. That's gonna do it for us here at the Happy Chicken Coop. Thanks for listening. If you find our content interesting, if you learned something new, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the YouTube channel. With that, I hope you have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.